Hello gamers, my name is Aretta, and welcome back to another one of my gold guides for this dead game. That was a joke. Please don't mold in the comments. In this video, I'll be going over a bunch of new ways to make gold in the Elder Scrolls Online's Firesong patch. This is a bit of a routine on this channel at this point, so feel free to smash subscribe if you're into Jeff Bezos RP and ESO. We'll be going over new items that are dropping this patch that'll be worth a pretty penny, how to go ahead and get those items, and we'll wrap things up by chatting a bit about some noteworthy sets to sell. Alright, let's get into it. Let's talk about new motifs first, because fashion is endgame after all. A lot of the motifs that I'm going to mention in a sec here are unfortunately not in the game just yet as I'm working on this video, but they were available to be viewed on the PTS, which would suggest that they're very likely going to be added in the coming months. Something that should be noted is the fact that the daily quest rewards for the new zone, Galen, are not even dropping any motifs upon the release of Firesong, which I find pretty surprising since I think that's one of the most attractive reasons to complete daily quests, but I digress. I'll refrain from sharing too many of my opinions in this guide, I'll save those for a later video. The Sisters Guardian motif is fairly new. You can acquire motif pages of this style from the High Isle Delve Daily Reward Coffers that you receive upon turning in your daily delve quests in this zone. I think the style looks really nice, although granted it does look fairly similar to a lot of the other motifs that have already been recently added. Nevertheless, these have been selling for an impressive amount of gold, enough to justify farming delve dailies. I'll let you be the judge of that. The in-game description of this style suggests that these motifs will be dropping from Galen's daily world boss and daily delve reward coffers, although of course they're not dropping at all right now. This format deviates from what we've come to expect from dailies since Blackwood debuted, where two motifs are split between the two different kinds of daily quests, that being delve and world boss dailies. I'm curious to see if this is indeed intended and if we should expect this format going forward. On the topic of Galen dailies, it's also worth noting that you can receive structural High Isle furnishing plans from these. Yeah, the same exact ones from the High Isle dailies. I wonder if this means that we will not be receiving any Galen-specific structural furnishing plans from the Galen dailies. This would be yet another deviation from what we've come to expect from the daily quest reward model thus far. I'm curious, what do you guys think about this? The fire song motifs, when they are implemented, will be attainable from completing volcanic vent dailies in Galen. The Drowned Mariner and Ephraise Will motifs were also available to preview on the PTS. They'll have a chance to drop upon completing the dungeons Graven Deep and Earthen Root Enclave, respectively. Be sure to keep an eye on the ESO news to know when these motifs release, as farming and selling new motifs is a surefire way to make a lot of gold, especially when they're initially implemented. There are quite a few new Druidic themed furnishing plans that have debuted with the release of this DLC. Because these plans are brand new and not yet available via the Master at Mediator's furnishing documents, you can count on these plans being among the most valuable zone specific furnishing plans this patch. Eden Prime suggests checking out Maltheo Ruiax, I totally f***ing butchered that, didn't I? Bedroom, if you're looking to actively farm these furnishing plans. Maltheo's home is not too far from the Way Shrine in Vestir. You can loot all of the containers on the way to the bedroom, and then you can stick to farming the bedroom efficiently by looting all of the containers, indulging in a little murder, exiting through the door to reset everything, rinsing, and repeating. If you're not fond of actively farming for furnishing plans, just be sure to always loot containers in Galen while you're partaking in other activities such as questing or doing your dailies. And don't forget to slot that homemaker CP for a chance at receiving double plans. Lastly, a small selection of furnishing plans also have a chance to drop from Galen's volcanic fence. Maybe you can pick up a couple while you're farming leads. The New Life Festival will be taking place this patch. 
These seasonal events provide great opportunities to make a ton of easy gold. For this event, I would recommend selling furnishing materials such as heartwood, mundane rune, ochre, bast, pitch, and alchemical resin. These materials are necessary to complete event-specific writs to receive the crystal frost skin, as well as other neat event goodies, and they always experience a significant increase in price around this time of the year so it may be worthwhile to start saving those up. The festival-specific writs tend to also sell for quite a bit during the first few days of the event, so if you have any saved, or if you get any on the first day, it's not a bad idea to sell them on day one of the event for some gold, and then, if needed, repurchase them later when the market gets saturated and their prices decrease significantly. The same can be said for all event-specific items, to be fair, such as those that you can get from the upcoming Dark Heart of Skyrim event. Be sure to stock up on those Sovngarde-style pages at the end of that event. You'll thank me later. Alright, lastly, let's chat about some sets to consider selling for gold this patch. I stated in my last quarterly gold guide that Plague Break, Dark Convergence, and Hrothgar's gear no longer drop from your rewards for the worthy mails that you receive upon earning increments of 20k alliance points. As one may expect, the supply of these sets has dried up quite a bit on PCNA considering the fact that these sets aren't quite so readily available. The only way to obtain them now is to purchase RNG coffers from the elite gear vendor that costs 30k AP a pop. Although Plague Break and Dark Convergence have been tweaked quite a bit since their initial release, these two sets are still sought after, and the demand for them has far exceeded their supply, allowing traders to charge hundreds of thousands of gold for the most popular traded items. Even off-traded Plague Break gear has been selling for a hefty sum, making purchasing these coffers one of the better means to convert alliance points into gold. And don't sleep on those Dark Convergence coffers either, as some of those items are also worth quite a bit, particularly the Ice Staves. It's no secret that Ice Wardens are omega cracked this patch, and many who play them have taken to utilizing the Frostbite gear set as a suitable overland PvE gear option. You know, something to tide them over until they get their hands on dungeon and trial gear. While this set also isn't super optimal in PvP, some Magden PvPers have gravitated towards it because of how easy it is to maintain essentially 100% uptime on the set bonus. Thus, Ice Staves and Divine's Frostbite gear have been great sellers and I suspect that will continue to be the case as Ice Mage enjoyers continue to reign supreme. You can receive frostbite gear from killing bosses and completing daily quests in Blackwood. On the topic of Ice Wardens, many are using Ice Staves this patch, so be mindful of this fact anytime you receive an Ice Staff for a commonly used set, such as Rallying Cry, a PvP staple. Admittedly, I'm not very well versed when it comes to understanding what gear is sought after by the more casual solo community, but when I realized that this gear set in particular was selling for a shitload of gold and divines, and I couldn't immediately understand why, I figured it was about time to start paying attention to that population of players, as evidently there are enough of them to influence the market as much as the meta chasing Andes do. So I'll be doing my best going forward to include this kind of information in these quarterly guides. Hexos Ward provides a line of damage, two lines of crit, and a significant damage shield anytime you deal critical damage. This shield can proc once every 7 seconds. Because of this shield and the offensive stats that the set provides, this set has been recommended by a handful of content creators that specialize in solo build content. You can pick up this set from killing bosses and completing dailies in Fargrave and the Deadlands. If you fancy yourself as more of a crafter and wish to earn gold by selling crafted gear, I would recommend creating Order's Wrath, Night Mother's Gaze, Stoons, and Wretched Vitality gear. Okay, psych, I know I said lastly earlier, but I actually have two other quick honorable mentions to finish up this video. Firstly, Galen treasure maps are worth quite a bit because there are two noteworthy leads that are associated with them. 
a notion that has caused quite a stir within the community. Unfortunately, it seems as if there is no ancestral or ancient motif lead associated with these maps, the way there always has been with DLC maps since Greymoor debuted. Yet another deviation from... Yeah, okay, you get the point. <laughs> I'm starting to sound like a broken record here. You cannot farm for specific zone maps as the map that you receive anytime you loot a container that can produce one is entirely random. But keep in mind the fact that Galen maps in particular are super expensive. And secondly, the Pelin's Paragon style pages can drop from Tales of Tribute reward coffers. Any tribute enjoyers? As you may imagine, these style pages sell for a whole lot as well. And that's all for now. For more ESO gold guides, feel free to check out the other content on my channel, and for more information on some great ways to make gold at any time, feel free to join my Discord server. Thanks for watching everyone, and thank you to my YouTube members for the additional support. Take it easy gamers, and I'll see ya in the next video. Cheers!